One really great thing about SharePoint list and library views is that we can do conditional formatting based on columns or rows. And to make this work, all you need is at least one column that you're going to use to determine whether or not an item meets that conditional uh, criteria. So in this case, we can already see an example looking in this grouped by region view of this training audit library that the review process is using conditional formatting. And if it's approved, the cell is green. And if it's not approved, the cell is this reddish orange. So to do this, let me just kind of work backwards for you here first. If I click on the column header that already has this and I go to column settings and choose to format this column, notice there's already a check on background colors. And up at the top of this panel, it shows me that I'm formatting columns and not an entire view. So just one column in this case. So if I go down to where background colors is already selected and click on edit styles, notice here's my, my condition. If review process equals approved, then green. And if it's not approved, then this red. Okay, and the other two are just white. So let me remove these here and we'll start from scratch so you can see how this is built out. I'm going to click on reset to default style down at the bottom. There we go. And you can see it had some conditional formatting because it's a choice column but I want to change that, right? So I'm going to, uh, for approved, I want that to be green again. So I can just choose the pencil next to it and choose green. For not approved, I want that to be red. For in process, let's actually leave that as yellow, kind of that in between, right? And if it's a new request, let's make that one blue this time. Okay, so now basically we've got that color-coded uh, coordination across the team and hopefully we all understand what those mean. Uh, now if I wanted to only use the colors for approved and not approved like we saw when we started, we click that uh, pencil again and choose no styles on the ones that shouldn't use color coding. Okay, so that's one way to do this. So let's try something similar on review date. If I drop down the review date header and I choose column settings and format this column, we're going to use conditional formatting. And let's say my scenario is I want to highlight everything that's before today in red, because maybe if it, you know, it shouldn't be on our list anymore if it's before today. So uh, conditional formatting, I'm going to select that. And then everything gets assigned gray by default. And I don't want to keep that. So I'm going to select that and choose delete rule. Now I'm going to add a rule and say if review date is less than or is before, and then today, then I want to show it as red, right? But maybe that's not enough, because what if it was already approved before that day, right? Then maybe it's okay. So I want to add another condition, and I want to say, and if review process not equals, and we're going to choose approved, all right, that fixed that one. But then also, if not approved was a decision and that process is completed as well, then I don't need to see conditional formatting there either. So we'll do one more. We'll say, and if review process is not equal to not approved. There, so now we're only highlighting the cells that have a date prior to today and the items are still in process or they're new, right? So kind of a way to easily identify what's overdue or needing to be done still. So I'll go ahead and save that. There we go, and I'll close out of that panel. So we're seeing a good mix here, right? right? Now realistically, what I'd probably do is I'd hide certain statuses like you saw in the previous lesson so that we had specific views for statuses or those that were overdue or something. So we use a combination of conditional formatting with creating views so we have like an overdue report or we could have you know, a current status report, maybe all of those that are in process, all of those that are not approved, so on and so forth. Um, a lot of people who work with uh, geolocations will create views based on regions or based on states or whatever the case may be there as well. Um, so let's go ahead, since we did a column formatting, let's do a whole view formatting. So this time I'm gonna go back to my all documents view. Okay, and I'm gonna drop down the view menu again and choose format the current view. Now this time, I want to I want to keep it in the view uh, vertical here instead of going over to columns. And notice I can do alternating rows, which makes it a little easier to read, right? A little bit of light gray in the background there. But once again, I could also just do conditional formatting. So rather than one cell being highlighted, I could highlight the whole row under certain conditions. So maybe I'm going to do conditional formatting and manage rules. 
delete that default gray one because I don't want that. And I'm going to add a rule that says if modified by is equal to. All right, so now everything that's assigned to Megan is easily identifiable. So I've got the blue highlighting and I could reformat that and change the color if I want to. Um, now something else we can do, it looks like we can just do colors at first. Until you click more styles, you could actually say I want that to be bold. I want it to be large, perhaps, right, to really make it stand out. So you can do a little bit more if you want and put some borders in there and whatnot, just to really make it easy to find what you're looking for. So uh, basically, uh, we've got our formatting. I'll click on Save. And then I want to save this as a separate view, actually. So I'm going to save this view as Megan's view. And I'm going to uncheck this box that currently has it as a public view. Because if it's public, everybody else on my team can use this, and they may not care about Megan's stuff. Maybe Megan created this view just for herself. So I'm going to uncheck that and click Save. There we go. So now Megan has a private view that only she sees on the view menu. She simply just clicks on the view menu and clicks on Megan's view, and now here's her conditional formatting that she chose. Okay, now on the all documents, since Megan did change that before she created hers, she needs to undo this probably. So we're going to go back, and we're going to go back one more time and delete Megan's custom formatting there and save. There, so now all documents is back to normal but Megan now has her private view with that formatting. So of course you can just start with creating a new view and have Megan's first. You don't always have to start from all documents. Just to, you know, it matters where you start and then make sure that you return anything that you started with back to its original state. So that's pretty much uh, conditional view formatting. We also did some conditional column formatting there. It uh, gives you a good idea of how to create dynamic uh, experiences that change based on the date or based on statuses of items. And remember that everything we just did applies to both libraries and lists.